Hello Tab Nation, it's your boy Tom and today we're doing a macro video where we're going to be showing you three different uh, macros that I found. Uh, if you guys know other ones that I haven't done a video on, definitely let me know in the comments below. Uh, obviously a link to where to get all these is going to be in the description, so check them out and which one you're interested. Play around, see what works best for you. Uh, so let's uh, open up here, that's a old one. Let me resize this because I realize this is full screen and I'm not recording full screen. Good enough. All right. So the first one I found very interesting. It's uh, actually a script that's written in auto hotkeys. Uh, I just randomly f stumbled across this one day and I thought it was cool that it's done in auto hotkeys. Um, I don't know how to say this guy's username or person's. Uh, I'm not even going to try. <laughs> um, but yeah, just go, link in the description to uh, copy the script code here. Um, just a heads up though, this is, seems like the old version that uh, started out this whole thing. But if you scroll uh, through, you can find like the newer versions, like here's uh, version 2.1. Um, so you can push expand, select all, copy, or download, whatever one, and just put it into whatever editor you want, which I've already done here. You don't really need to do anything with the code here unless you want to change the uh, default hotkeys, um, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, it's 400 some lines of code, 470 minus probably some white spaces. Um, so I was pretty impressed with that, um, how simple that is. Um, so let's go ahead and launch that. What did I call that? Uh, let's test one. And all right, so we got this on our screen. I'm actually going to have to change the window here because it is by default at the top of my screen there. So sorry, I'm zooming out there. Um, I know you probably can't read that very well, but it's just uh, telling you what the different hotkeys uh, are and what they do. So F1 is uh, to record a screen. That would basically be my entire area. F2 would be more like specifically recording within a window. F3 is stop, F4 is play, F5 is edit, uh, F6 is pause, F9 is option. So let's go through some of these. So F1, we're gonna start off with uh, recording. I'm gonna put this right here. So I'm gonna push F1. I'm gonna take this, move it around. I'm gonna open notepad. And I'm gonna type in hello world. And then I'm just going to say don't uh, save. So now I'm going to push F3 to stop. So all good. Uh, now let's go ahead and play it. Um, besides pushing F4, you can also just click the button up here too. Um, so let's push F4. And as you see, it's uh, kind of running through everything uh, that I did. Might be a little bit messed up there. Uh, just because I think I moved my mouse by Okay, yeah. It's messing up because it's not opening in the right place, it seems. So it's a little wonky, but that's mostly my fault um, for doing that. <laughs> but yeah. Um, let's see if it's going to at least type. I'll try that again. F1. We're going to go down here and type in Hello World. Stop. Play. There we go. So the first time I tried it, it was just a little wonky. Uh, that's fine. That's to be expected. I mean, hey, it's only around 400 lines of code, so it's pretty impressive on its own, and it's all written on the hotkeys. It's great. Uh, so F5, or the button in the GUI, is edit, and that's actually going to be your actual code. So it's really cool because I can sit here, save this, modify it how I want, Put it into another script or it's a standalone script so I don't even like need all this program running it can just be by itself uh, by the way the name of this program I think he just called it like macro recorder <laughs> uh, mouse and keyboard macro recorder hey whoever invented this uh, or wrote this if you're uh, watching this you should probably give your thing a name so we know what to refer to it as 
But yeah, anyway, uh, last thing is options. This is just, you know, if you want to disable it, uh, keeping track of your mouse movements or uh, the keys, you can export, which just saves it. Uh, import if you want to edit something or just run it through this, um, stuff like that. So pretty standard. Goodbye. Close that one down. All right, let's take a look at our next one, which is going to be Pi Macro Recorder. I'm going to launch that. I'm going to go to the website. That would be this one. Uh, once again, description below. Right now it seems it's a uh, for Windows, download for Windows, but I believe this should work on. Yeah, okay. I'll say it's Python. It's written in Python. So as long as you have Python, you should be able to run this on Linux and Mac OS, which is really cool. I always like the macro recorders that work across the board. Um, and then he has a little thing here uh, where he talks about, you know, just how to install you know, different things on different systems uh, if you don't have Python on there. Uh, but it's, once again, this is another very simple one. It's just called uh, PY Mac Recorder Pi Python Mac Recorder. Uh, just has, you know, a play and record button. So let's go ahead and push record. I'll move this around. Let's open Notepad. Kind of do what we did before. Hello world. And I'll close that out. And we'll push stop. Boom. Now let's push play. Hands are up here. And the thing I like about this one specifically is look how natural this looks. I mean, it records very detailed on exactly what I did. I mean, it looks so natural uh, compared to most mac uh, macro recorders. So that's pretty cool. Uh, as far as options go, you got new, load, save, basic stuff. Uh, playback is probably the one you're the most interested in if you're gaming. Uh, plus, when I just record it, you know, I was slow. Um, but you can go all the way up to 10 on this. So let's go to, like, 6. Confirm. We're going to go ahead and push play. And, and just look how much faster that went. Obviously, depending on what you're doing, you could make it too fast. Uh, but, yeah. But yeah, you, that, that's cool that you can do that. You can also have it repeat. Uh, you can schedule it, which is really nice. Uh, to go off, like, in the middle of the night or something to do something. Uh, settings, hotkeys is probably the one you uh, definitely would want to take a look at. Uh, stop playback is just F3, so by default there's none, but if you want to have like uh, uh, start playback, you can do like F2, or I guess I just pushed A. That's because I still have a script running somewhere. Okay, whatever. Um, so that's just going to, uh, you can do that or just push clear to get rid of it. So the, de the default does not have that. Other, I don't know what's in here. Oh, that's just basic, like, um, check updates, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, this one, another surprisingly just very easy one. Uh, and it just works. And it's probably one of the smoothest ones I've ever seen. So I like that one a lot. Uh, the next one is UI Path Studio. Uh, let's take a look at the website there. Yep, just uipath.com. Now, this website, they have, or this macro in general, has a lot going on, but it's insanely powerful. Uh, this one definitely has a little bit more of a learning curve compared to the last two I just showed you by a little bit. Um, but you can try it for free. Uh, you just make a very basic account, uh, just like any other website, blah, yada, yada. Uh, download it, and you get two things here. You get uh, UiPath Assistance and UiPath Studio. So we're going to launch the Studio because that's where you're really going to be doing stuff. Um, to be honest, I haven't messed around much with the UiPath Assistant. I will be doing that more, uh, figuring out a little bit better how that works, possibly making a second video. Now, if you guys want to see um, a follow-up video because I'm just kind of doing introduction specifically on this one hit the like button if I get hit 50 uh, likes in this video I'll do a more in-depth because this one kind of deserves its own video to be honest um, so yeah just let me know uh, but once you get in here um, they have a lot of templates uh, most of them seem to be mostly like word uh, Microsoft Office, sorry. So like Excel, uh, emails, Outlook, uh, kind of stuff. Um, but 
obviously you can create your own. Um, there's tools. I uh, didn't really explore those. Here's more templates. So as you can see, most of them are, a lot of them are like PowerPoint, all that kind of stuff. Um, but we're going to create a new project. We're going to make it completely blank. Uh, name it. YouTube test description for video, which I should probably spell correctly. There we go. Um, just a heads up, when you do download this and you run through the install, at least on my computer, it took like a good 15 minutes for the install. Um, another thing I want to point out is whenever you try to use some type of new thing that requires like a library, um, it's going to download it every single time you do use something for the first time. Uh, this is good because I'm sure with everything, all the libraries and modules that you need to run this, it would be a huge file. And there could be parts of that file that you're never going to use. So it's annoying in the moment because it's like, oh, I was just trying to make something. Now it's downloading, but it's quick. Uh, but it's only downloading the resources you're actually using. So it helps in the long run make a much smaller file on your computer. Now you got an insane amount of options here I mean look at this this is crazy now obviously a lot of these are very uh, specific you know you got zoom get meeting recording invite meeting um, <coughs> you got Shopify I mean it's crazy how many things are on here PayPal half of these I've never even heard of um, yeah there's a lot uh, one thing I want to point out is OCR is on here maybe do a video but we're just doing kind of basic stuff here uh, you can also search up here uh, we're able all right so let's create a folder because that's just right there so we're going to create a folder um, select the value you know we're going to put this on my desktop we're just going to call it UI test folder Oh, sorry, I'm selecting where to save it, not actually naming it. So desktop, select folder. There we go. Uh, text, basically what do we want to call it? YouTube test folder, whatever, save. And voila, we got that. So let's go ahead, we're going to push run. Uh, first time you do use uh, your new thing, it, it does need to compile uh, for it to run. So like I said, just takes a few seconds as you can see oh yeah I forgot it's also going to minimize itself uh, down for you okay for some reason it did not create I remember I had this issue last time I forget what exactly what I did that or it's saving in the wrong place oh it's saving well there it is I accidentally forgot to change it back to desktop it saved it to my documents There we go. I accidentally changed the wrong thing. Um, but yeah, so now if I run it, like I said, anytime you make changes, it doesn't need to compile. No biggie. There we go. Alright, so yeah, it's just creating a folder. Um, there's other things you can do. Obviously, you're going to have to explore a lot of this on your own um, and whatnot. Um, but one cool thing I like is when you hit here, you can add something before the step or after. So let's add something after. You're going to get this drop down where you can search. Um, so we could search like, uh, and I haven't memorized a lot of this because there's so much, but we could do like create a file. You know, we create a folder, maybe we want to create a file. Um, you can also delete stuff uh, if you want to get rid of a step, just a FYI. Um, so file location, desktop, file name. Text. Uh, something to point out here is you do need to give it an extension or it'll just create a unknown file. So TXT for a text file. So just make sure you do put what type of extension of the file you're trying to create or where it's going to create one that the system's not going to have any clue what it is. Um, so that just got created. And uh, yeah, let me see if I can, you guys can see that. Okay, you can't see this. So it just created a text file. 
pretty simple. But yeah, just run through. There's so much stuff to do. Um, some other things you can do is app recorder. Um, this one I can say like, oh, I'm going to record on my desktop. So it takes a second. It's collecting. Now it's, uh, you know, trying to figure out what to do. Uh, pushed enter. I'm going to right click. No, it's obviously just saying like click a lot. Uh, but it's recording. And I want to show you why this is really cool. Why I like this. Uh, it takes screenshots. Not a lot of macro recorders do this, and I love it. So it shows like the actual like screenshots of, you know, oh okay, he was you know clicking, right click, you know what window system list view thirty two, so I can see exactly what it's doing, and then I can make other changes too. Where okay, well, I didn't really want to do. I wanted to uh, double click the right key or button, whatever. Um, so it does that. So like I said, if you guys want to see more on this one specifically, hit the like button. I'll try to uh, dive more in deep just because there's so much stuff in here. I'll probably do a video on like pixel search and uh, image search, uh, OCR, and then maybe I'll do like one specific to Chrome because uh, this does come with a Chrome extension, uh, which you need in order for it to truly interact properly with Chrome, stuff like that. Um, obviously, you can save. I'm not going to because it's kind of a useless one. Uh, but yeah, if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And this was three more macro recorders. If you guys have seen one, I have a playlist of all my macro recorder videos. If I haven't done one on there that you guys like or used um, that I haven't touched base on, let me know in the comments below and hopefully give me like at least an idea of how to find it. Maybe like a direct link to the website or the GitHub of wherever you find it. I will see you all on the next one. Bye.